By end of this video, you will not just learn how to create balance in your life, but also take away a free download from me. So keep watching. Hi there. I'm Aparna, your personal coach, helping you upskill yourself to lead the life you desire. Last week, I spoke about how intentions are core to everything that happens in our life. They are the powerful way to make your dreams come true. So now that you have an intention to make that change in your life, how can you balance it with the commitments that you already have? I'm not saying work-life balance because to some people, work is part of life. But my reference is more to how can you create a sense of balance, that sweet spot in your life so you can feel contented. This thought is actually triggered from the following question and it is from a very good friend of mine, Arun Kumar, who asked me, Hey Aparna, over the years I have realized that my life has significantly changed. There are new responsibilities at work and fam family members seek my time and attention and my own personal goals on what I want to do for the community have evolved. Trying to balance all these often feel like I'm running from one thing to another, often without any success. This is causing stress and anxiety and in turn affecting my sleep and health. My question to you is, how do I bring a sense of balance to my life? How do I juggle these demands to have a better life? That's a fantastic question, Arun. To me, balance is managing my time. To be able to accommodate several things in a day and feel contented with what I've done by the end of the day. So if I'm passionate about reading books, then I should be able to schedule some time for book reading and not eat into my work time or even my family time. So with that intention, I'm gonna share with you 10 game-changing tips I have that you can use to create a sense of balance in your life. Tip number one, Create routines. Routines help create consistency in our schedules. They help us manage our time to build healthy habits. However, to keep up with the routine, you need to have an intention or a purpose. The routines that I've created in my life has bought me a lot of stability. It helped me become productive, take better care of myself, and also be consistent in doing so. When routines become a habit, you'll see how easily you'll be able to manage your time. An effective way to manage your routines is when you calendar block your time, which is also the tip number two. A lot of productivity experts recommend this. Calendar blocking is a simple technique where you're allotting chunks of your time to manage your routines, your work, your social events, your family time, and even your domestic chores. I've shared this previously. I calendar block my time as well. As I'm shooting this, today is Monday, and this is how my week looks. It's easy for you to calendar block your time when you plan in advance, which is my tip number three. When you don't plan your week, someone else will plan it for you. And believe me, scrambling around to do your things is not a great way to spend your week. There are always tons of things for us to do, to accomplish, but we can only do one to three meaningful tasks in any given day. When you plan in advance, you're able to space your week in such a way that you can accommodate all your priority tasks. You'll be able to see which tasks need 100% of focus and which are those unimportant tasks which can be overlapped. Which brings me to the next suggestion, which is tip number four, overlap unimportant tasks. I do recommend that you're mindful about every single task that you do, but there are certain tasks in our life which do not really need your 100% focus. They can be done on an autopilot mode and you very well know what those tasks are, right? Say you're scheduled to do your laundry, which probably does not need that much of attention from you. This is the time where you can either listen to your audiobooks, your podcasts, or even listen to your favorite music. I don't like household chores. Who does? laundry, cooking, but when you have to do them, why not make it enjoyable? I'm always on my podcast and learning so much as I'm doing my chores. And sometimes I play my favorite soundtracks so that it peps my mood as well. Tip number five, wake up early. Waking early will give you that extra time for you to do things that you love. You're not able to find time in your rest of the day. The mornings are quiet, the air is fresh, and if you had a good night's sleep, then you are refreshed as well. This is a perfect time for you to meditate, 
to reflect, to plan your day, or even to catch up on some quiet reading. But if you suddenly decide to make that change and you know wake up like an hour before, it's not going to happen. So the best way for you to wake up early is to do it gradually. So if you want to, if you get up at 6, 6 a.m. for example, then try and wake up at 5.45 for about a week and then slowly gradually move to waking up at 5.30 a week after that. But waking up early is manageable provided you get your rest, which is tip number six. A good night's rest is supremely important for your body to work at its best. And believe me, if you're cheating on that, then your body will give it back to you someday or the other. Everybody needs to unwind. Everybody needs rest. So don't go by few influencers on internet who tell you that they're okay with sleeping four hours or they're, that you must not sleep more than four hours. You need to decide how much time you need to sleep and to rest and to feel refreshed and factor in that aspect in your schedule as well. Personally, I would sleep six to seven hours in a, in a day and Believe me, if I don't get my sleep, I'm not a nice person to be around. A good night's sleep is as important as the next tip, which is self-care. I want you to think on this one. How do you feel after a good massage? Does it put you in a good mood? When you're charged physically and emotionally, you will be at your productive best, isn't it? Also remember, when you are taking care of yourself, when you are at your best, you're not just impacting your own life, but also the life of everyone else around you. And to create self-care in your life, you need to decide what are the boundaries that you have. You need to have a cut-off time from your work. You need to detach from your work, which is tip number eight. There are tons of research online which tells you why you need to have a cut-off time from your work. And as someone who's been on my own for a couple of years now, I know that it is really daunting to just detach away, just break away from the, you know, the thought process that you would be having in a day. However, it is important to have that boundary. So in order for us to be a productive best, we need to have eight hours of everything, eight hours of work, eight hours of recreation and eight hours of sleep or rest. When you overlap these activities, you are physically and mentally exhausted. And what's the point of working even after that? Because nothing gets done any which ways, right? Tip number nine, create timeouts. Timeouts, whether with or without your family, is another important way to create a balance in your life. This is a time where you are basically cutting off from your rest of the chores, from your routines and everything, and you usually end up reflecting on your life's choices and you it is very very important that if you're comfortable with your choice you need to reflect on going back and seeing whether you are on path to where you're going or whether you need to course correct all this will only happen when you give it some time to think and that will not happen unless you cut out from the rest of the things that you do so timeouts are very crucial for creating that balance I have been taking mandatory vacations for over 11 years now and every time I'm back from them, I'm supercharged and raring to go. Tip number 10, meditate. I don't want to elaborate on this point because I've been talking about this repeatedly in many, many videos and my last video was talking exclusively on the benefits of meditation. But what I can share with you is that I'm starting out a meditation for beginners class online. And if you're interested, do head to my website and you know to know more information about it and also to register for that. So there you are. Those are my 10 game changing tips that can help you create a sense of balance in your life. Now, I've also created a planner for you that you can download from my website. This planner will help you balance your priorities, your goals, your passions, your intentions, everything packed in one single page. And all you need to do after that is to follow it diligently. A famous author, Tony Schwartz, explains that humans have four different types of energies for us to manage every day. The physical energy is how healthy you are. Your emotional energy is how happy you are. Your mental energy is how well you can focus on something. 
and your spiritual energy is why are you doing all this what is your purpose intentional living is ensuring that you're taking care of all these energies in your life so i urge you to make a commitment to yourself and try intentional living everything that i shared in this video is backed by research and my own experience but if there's any tip that i've mentioned which did not work for you do let me know in the comment section below or reach out to me in any of the social media platforms I'm in. Hope you have a wonderful time. I'll see you next week with another topic on intentional living. Until then, take good care of yourself. Bye. If you find this video resourceful, do hit the like button, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe and also hit the bell button so you'll never miss an update from me.